So I think that everyone is aware of what went down over the weekend. Um, and I want to now take some time to talk about the fallout of the death of the $15 an hour minimum wage. Now, it's not completely dead as of yet. We'll talk about what can be done to resuscitate it. However, I want to take some time to focus on the ghouls that killed it. Gleefully so. Now, um, first of all, zero Republicans voted in support of a $15 an hour minimum wage, including so-called populists like Josh Hawley. Shows you that they are frauds. Uh, and let me remind you that the $15 an hour minimum wage, even though it is significant, even though millions of workers would get a raise from this, it's still entirely insufficient. Like we've been talking about a $15 an hour minimum wage for years now. So it really should be $20 an hour. $15 an hour is not enough. But would it be beneficial for workers to have at least a baseline wage of $15 an hour at a minimum? Yeah, I don't think anyone would deny that. But these eight Democrats or seven Democrats and one independent who caucuses with Democrats, not Bernie Sanders, decided to vote against even the bare minimum. And as Kylie Brakeman puts it, this is the new enemies list. It includes Joe Manchin, John Tester, Gene Shaheen, Maggie Hassan, Tom Carper, Chris Coons, Angus King, and the notorious Kirsten Cinema. All of these individuals who are Democrats voted against the $15 an hour minimum wage increase. And when it comes to Kirsten Cinema, as you all know by now, she didn't just vote against it, but she decided to do a little bit of a victory lap after patting her buddy Mitch McConnell on the, on the back. Take a look. This is, uh, this is something else. Miss Cinema, Miss Cinema. No. Just completely fucking shameless. To vote against the $15 an hour minimum wage, that's like, that's morally reprehensible. But to do it gleefully, like to celebrate openly when you know you're being filmed, when you know your behavior is going to be broadcasted to millions. Like that's, I don't, uh, I don't even know what we call that behavior. It's just disgusting. Uh, however, if you uh, were offended that Kirsten Cinema decided to pour salt in the wounds of workers who desperately needed an increase in the minimum wage, well, congratulations, you're a gigantic sexist. Because as Amanda Turkle of HuffPost reports, Senator Cinema's spokesperson said it's sexist to comment on a female politician's body language or physical demeanor when HuffPost inquired about her thumbs down vote on the minimum wage. Yeah. Nobody buys this. Not a single person buys this. She is very obviously trying to deflect and shield herself from criticism. And look, I'm going to do a little bit of a reverse Uno card on them and say that if you criticize me and say that I'm sexist, since you're criticizing me, a gay man, I'm going to say that that's homophobic to criticize me in any way whatsoever. So uh, Kirsten Cinema must be homophobic for not allowing me to criticize her. Are you, are you really trying to like dictate how a gay man criticizes powerful people and elites. Really, Kirsten Cinema, Is that what you're trying to do, you homophobe? Look, it's all ridiculous, right? Of course, that's not an actual argument I'm making because I'm actually a serious person. Whereas this spokesperson for Kirsten Cinema and Cinema herself, they're not serious people. But she got a lot of backlash, and I'm sure that you know about this or you're, you were part of it. Uh, I just want to give you a small sample of uh, the outrage... <laughs> <laughs> that she invited uh, because she decided to just play it off, pretend like she didn't just like give American workers the middle finger. And she tweeted this out. Wow, incredibly grateful for Arizona's frontline workers caring for loved ones during the pandemic. Now, as you can see, uh, this is just shameless. Uh, let's go to her page because I want you to see the ratio because it gives you a sense um, of how many people were not buying her bullshit. So you see 16,000 replies to 2.7 thousand likes. Nobody believes this because if she actually cared about frontline workers in Arizona, then she would make sure that some of them wouldn't be making less than a $15 an hour minimum wage. And she was met with this image. I also uh, decided to participate, uh, which says fuck the poor on her mask, because that is essentially what her little, you know, stunt demonstrated. Like it, it was a message to workers. You see uh, Chelsea Manning saying this as well. You see Savage Joy sharing this. Uh, Kirsten Cinema, world's cutest neo-fascist. Uh, you can't see like the text, but this is what the bottom of it says. 
See the image again. Vosh saying, damn, you know what piece of legislation those essential workers would have benefited from? Um, you see the amazing atheist joining in. Benjamin Dixon is saying, may I recommend careerbuilder.com? Basically saying your career is over. Ken Klippenstein actually shared this image and told people to, uh, to spam it. Uh, you see a uh, good politic guy, great YouTube channel, by the way, uh, saying that. So that was a fucking lie. I love this meme by Todd, the creator. And basically, if we scroll down, you will see this meme over and over and over again. Uh, Anthony Fantano, shout out to my boy here saying, uh, then pay them more dummy. I mean, what she said is obviously insane. Like no, there's there's nothing here, but you know, memes and people like shitting on her, rightfully so, because she's literally saying, oh wow, I appreciate frontline workers so much, but you literally just gave them the middle finger gleefully so. So for you to like tweet this, after you just did what you did, it's it's downright grotesque. Like you should be hiding your face. You should be ashamed of yourself. Like like it's still going. Like it goes on forever and ever and ever. Like we'd be here all day because this is uh this is what she was met with. And I hope that for the rest of her career, this image haunts her. So I mean, um, it is really satisfying to see everyone like call out her bullshit, but at the same time, at the end of the day, she still gets the last laugh because she she wins. She killed the policy that would have helped millions of Americans. And if Democrats, like if eight Democrats, if they deflect on the $15 an hour minimum wage, what does this mean? Like, is it even possible? Well, the answer is yes, but two things have to happen. First of all, Joe Biden actually has to fight. Joe Biden has not been doing anything to put pressure on conservative Democrats like uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. And furthermore, Chuck Schumer, who is now pretending to be more progressive because he doesn't want AOC to primary him in 2022. He needs to actually keep his caucus in line, like whip the votes up for policies that you claim to support, like you are in leadership. But Claire McCaskill actually kind of like gave us some insight after she, or when she was competing against Josh Hawley back in 2018. And she said, look, Chuck Schumer is great because he doesn't really try to like control us. He lets us do whatever we want. That's an issue. If he's letting you be as conservative as you need to be in order to seek reelection uh, or win reelection, that's a problem. It makes the aggregate party look worse. And this is an issue that I have with the big tent party label, because you have a tent that's so big that you end up including Republicans in your caucus and they obstruct your agenda. So if Joe Biden doesn't actually fight and put pressure, use his bully pulpit to actually like get these Democrats in line, it's not going to happen. Now, another way that this can be saved is if it is passed using budget reconciliation with 51 votes. That means it is going to have to go in a piece of legislation that Joe Biden really wants to get passed. And he wants to pass his $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. Now, here's the thing. It's going to go back to the House. If progressives actually bind together, they can block this and vote against the COVID relief package unless it includes a $15 an hour minimum wage provision that could help get this codified into law. Because here's the thing, it's clear now you're not going to pass this with uh, 60 votes. If if you try to pass the $15 an hour minimum wage with 60 votes, it's not going to happen. So 51 votes is going to be difficult. So you have to put it in legislation that uh, these Democratic senators don't want to vote against. And that $1.9 trillion COVID relief package is definitely something that they don't want to vote against. So if progressives bind together and they say, we will not support this package when it comes back to the House unless it includes a $15 an hour minimum wage, then that can actually help. Because here's the thing. Currently, the balance of power very clearly tips in the scales, uh, tips on the side of uh, conservative Democrats. They are controlling everything. They are dictating what is or isn't in, uh, included in legislation. And progressives have absolutely got to stick together, be disciplined, and flex their muscles, actually say, look, we don't like that they took out the minimum wage to appease these conservative Democrats, so we want it back in. And if we're not appeased, then we're not going to support it. Now, at that point, conservative Democrats, they will remain disciplined and they will suggest that, you know, the squad and progressive Democrats, they're just trying to hold up this legislation when Americans desperately need relief. But if they are disciplined, if they say, look, no, it's actually you who are holding up this legislation because workers need a raise, especially now during a pandemic. We think that a $15 an hour minimum wage 
is part of COVID relief. Like this is going to stimulate the economy by increasing the purchasing power of working Americans. If you don't support this, then uh, you're the one who's holding it up because we see it as crucial. Like if they actually remain disciplined, then this has a chance. But if they don't, this is going to die. And uh, I think that they should bear some of the responsibility and accept that they didn't fight hard enough for this. Because the pattern that we're seeing here is that the left and the squad, they have no say in any legislation whatsoever. They make recommendations and they tweet about it, which is great. But you don't actually control anything if it is conservatives who are constantly dictating what goes in legislation and what gets taken out of legislation. You actually have to withhold your votes and really remain disciplined, bind together, be a strong block. So that way, you know, everyone in Congress is trying to appease you and not these conservative Democrats who should have no say whatsoever right now, especially when the American people need relief. So that's what I want to see. Am I uh, optimistic? No, not necessarily. Does it seem like the $15 an hour minimum wage is dead? Yeah, it really seems that way. And that's just fucking pathetic. It's pathetic. Like, this is what Democrats ran on. And if they don't deliver, they have nobody to blame but themselves. Joe Biden will have nobody to blame but himself if he loses control in 2022 and if Democrats lose in 2024 handily. Because if you don't deliver for the American people, they're not going to come out and vote for you. So you've got two years to deliver the bare minimum. And if you can't even get the bare minimum to the American people, then um, <laughs> you deserve to get blown out. We don't deserve the consequences of Republican policies. Americans don't deserve that. But that's what's going to happen. Because as a party, you've shown that you are completely incompetent. Now, look, it's what, 50 days or so into Joe Biden's administration. He can still turn things around. He can actually choose to fight or just remain passive as he's been and allow conservative Democrats to obstruct his entire agenda. But if he does this, he's going to learn real quick that the American people will not be there for him and the Democratic Party. So, uh, I mean, I, uh, I don't know what else to say. Like, this story is uh, grotesque, but it's not surprising because the Democratic Party is a Big Ten party. And when you allow Republicans into your coalition, things like this happen. When you allow Republicans like Kirsten Sinema into your party rather than kicking them out and marginalizing them, this is what happens.